Hello everyone and welcome back to my intergalactic trek in Elite Dangerous and in this episode I'm gonna finally leave 7 Gamma Aquilae after having done some trading around here. I managed to rack up quite a lot of funds. Uh, you can see my new balance is 269,000 credits. That was entirely done by buying and selling superconductors. Uh, I brought over superconductors to 7 Gamma Aquilae. It demands them. And in the process I discovered that the economy system in this game is not really up to snuff. Uh, frankly, you see here uh, demand and supply, well that's all fake. Um, basically no matter how many superconductors I brought over here, it didn't reduce the demand, it didn't change the price I could sell at, and over on the supply side, uh, they, uh, they just had 28 supply. But uh, even though it uh, showed that going down every time I purchased it, it immediately went back up again by the next time I went over there. And it wasn't production because it never went beyond that 28. So um, always a consistent price. It was 16,000 credits per run. So that's how much I made each time. Uh, took a few runs to get to the balance I have right now. Uh, incidentally, to get to uh, 16,000 credits per run, I had to dump out my fuel scoop and change it out with a a new uh, cargo hold so that I could have uh, 16 units of uh, cargo space. But yeah, uh, in the process, I didn't record any of it, and that's unfortunate because I did get interdicted once and destroyed. Uh, but that cost me about uh, 3,500 credits, not too bad. Uh, because if you see here, you've got this uh, rebuy cost. Uh, right there, it's uh, 4,672 because I bought some extra equipment along the way. Uh, actually, let's see. Uh, this is the equipment I have right now. You can see I've got uh, a C-type frame shift drive now. Uh, D-type life support power distributor and so D-type sensors but uh, right now and D-type thrusters so we're a little bit better off than we were but now that I've got cash I want to head out and get some get some better equipment and continue on towards the center of the galaxy uh, this I'm probably going to be uh, going only part ways the first foray just to see how far I can get and this episode is where I'm really starting that out I'm gonna try and go fast and that means instead of having navigation being economical routes I'm gonna switch to fast routes I still don't have anything better than uh, whoa that's a lot of fast routes um, I still don't have anything better than a basic discovery scanner so I'm going to have to just uh, deal with that for now. I'm not going to be able to scan as much as I'd like on this first try. And so, wow, there's a lot of these little generic systems. Um, where I want to head first is this Combrus. I'm going to stick to the name systems first. And then after Combrus, I'm going to head to Kakandi. And that is because I'm hoping that there is some equipment in, in these places. After that, I'm going to continue on. This is still in our preferred direction. So that's good. And yeah, we've got a, quite a jump range now, 17 light years. So that should be good. All right, go, go, go. All right, so with all that said, let us proceed to launch. I need at least a fuel scoop back, so I need to get rid of the cargo hold and get a fuel scoop now so that I can refuel on the way. Yeah, so when I got destroyed, that was because I wasn't really paying much attention. If you've ever done trading, you know, I was I was doing other stuff while trading. I wasn't paying my full attention to the game, and so uh, I ended up not hearing the interdiction very well, uh, or I caught it late and stuff like that. So I ended up losing all my exploration money. Uh, so some systems I had explored I then had not sold yet I lost all that but other than that it wasn't too big a loss in terms of credits losing ships apparently is not a big deal in this game okay anyway here we go Okay, slowing down, and we want to head to, uh, this is all discovered already, so no need to belabor the point. This corn 
Blue Horizons. I already checked out that that was a place with outfitting. And a shipyard, so that's probably a good sign that has lots of good equipment. I'm hoping for some scanner at least. We've got some good cash here. Maybe a detailed surface scanner if it's available. Obviously I still can't get an advanced scanner. That's 1.5 million and I'm nowhere near that yet. Oh, looks like this is a gas giant here. Not a particularly spectacular gas giant, but still. Sort of a white and purplish kind of thing. Very gray scale, very gray scale. Okay, here we are. And I see the docking port right in front of us. Okay, 27, there it is. Okay, so as I understand it, uh, if we're going to be outfitting and doing that stuff anyway, we should just go ahead and enter hangar. Okay, let me take a look at the shipyard for a sec here. This would be an interesting thing to aim for, this Type 6 transporter. Lots of space. Costs a lot though. This is what we've got. Not much by way of internals. The internals are what are critical here in terms of what I can carry and outfit. And we've only got four spaces there. That's the base one. Cobra. Cobra's got six, so Cobra will be much better too. And it's fast. So that's a good thing though. They don't really state jump range here, though I think it's got... I don't know what its jump range is compared to that transporter in the beginning. But it's cheaper. It's cheaper. It's probably the next step up. Though I don't have enough credits for it right now. So maybe one goal of the uh, today's... And our first foray into the deeper galaxy is to try and get enough earnings from ex exploration to purchase that. And uh, we're talking about maybe a hundred thousand credits will do because I get to sell the hauler as well. So uh, yeah, about a hundred thousand credits. Uh, so like fifty systems, something like that. So let's outfit and see how we can manage that. So I don't need this cargo rack anymore. What I want to do is have a uh, a fuel scoop. Probably not the best thing to put there since. Well, I don't know. Some of the fuel scoops are pretty big. Class C fuel scoop. Not as many fuel scoops as I saw at that other location. This is the basic fuel scoop. So the this next step up is really this class C, uh, the rating C one. Okay, well I'll get that. Yeah. Okay, now was there any other way? Well, uh, actually, what I want to do. Well, hold on. Maybe there's a scanner of some kind somewhere. Uh, not so much. Okay, so no better scanner. That's sad. But better frame shift drive? Okay, well, let's splurge and get the best one. Is that, yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Yep. So... Power plant, maybe? I mean, I, I don't think... Oh, that's too expensive, anyway. Uh, I don't think we really need one. Wish we could replace this with something better, but nope. Okay, so I think that does it. Nothing to put in the place of that cargo rack. If we take a look at our 
situation here. Rebuy cost is 12,000 credits, but that means I get all my equipment back, I think, and that's why it costs more. It's sort of like insurance. So uh, 12,000 credits, fine. So we won't lose too much if we lose this ship. I'll end up either back here or back at the... I think we're going over to Kakandi to see what they have. So uh, let me set navigation for that quickly. I, I could I swear I've seen Kakandi before. Is this the same system we visited or is it another system called Kakandi? Anyway. Yeah, I think we're done here. Okay, Kakandi's right there, but let me take a quick look at the galaxy map. It is in the right direction, right? Well, seems so. Yeah, that's towards the center, all right. And then after Kakandi, we're just gonna go as quickly as possible. Uh, the longest jumps we can have available. All right, no longer mass lock. Here we go. Frameshift drive charging. Three, two, one, and finish. Okay, so Kakandi, and what kind of stuff do we have here? Barcelo Terminal. Let's see the system map. Oh, interesting. Alright, uh... That has outfitting and shipyard. That doesn't have anything. That doesn't have anything. So it's this, uh, Darbo Terminal. 4.9 million people in this Kakandi. Wow. Okay. Let's see if Darbo Terminal has something good. Lots of stars in this one. It's getting a little hot here. I think what I really need is some sort of better shielding of some kind. Doesn't say here, but there's there's some sort of actual hull improvements that can be done. So I think uh, somebody suggested turning orbit lights on, lines on, uh, as a way of maybe finding some places a little bit easier. So maybe I'll keep those on since we are trying to do discovery without an advanced scanner. Okay, so you're rotating... How are you rotating? Anyway, uh, let's just ask for... Permission? Docking request granted. So, landing pad 28. Okay, let's just go straight to the hangar and see what they've got. Oh. Let me take a look at Universal Counter Graphics while we're here. I don't have much to sell though, like I said, I was mostly trading. Almost entirely. Yeah. Okay, well this, this one system. Okay, but outfitting. So 
So it's lightweight alloys. Reinforced alloys might be a little bit stronger. But how much and is it worthwhile for me to reduce my jump range in order to have that? Because there's always this there's this thing here. When we look at repairs, ship integrity. So is it worthwhile to get that stuff to boost? Does it boost sh ship integrity? I do not know. But not knowing, I guess I should just leave it. Lots of stuff. Auto field maintenance unit. In-flight repair of most internal ship modules. Well, uh, it's mostly integrity that I'm worried about. But here's the detailed surface scanner. Unfortunately, I can't afford it now. But uh, it was for a good cause, because I got the got the better frame shift drive. But maybe I could go down one step in sh frame shift drive and get the detailed service scanner. Let's see. It's a whole five light years we're talking about. I don't think it'd be enough either. It's just uh, 107,000 credits and that's not enough to get the detailed service scanner. Oh well. Okay, yeah, so that's not good enough. Alright, let's go out there. Let's see what we can find and hopefully bring back some good card graphics. So, gonna plot. Let's see how far we can go with our plotting. So there's this... No, that's uh, horizontal. Uh, this... This is the right direction, yeah. Let's see. Oh, well, there's this thing here. What is that? It's yellow, so it's probably not that interesting. Okay, uh, let's go there first. That seems like a pretty far-flung location from here. All right, so here we go in my little hauler. Going to do without stations for a while. So just verifying that this does bring us further along. Yep, it's almost uh, to 180 there. Okay. Okay, you are already discovered, are you? Yes, it looks like uh, this is an already discovered area. Okay, so we don't need to do anything discovering here. Let's just proceed. What's the next star system that we could go for? Orient properly. Let's see. Oh, well. Oh, great. My escape vector is towards the star. That's not good. For heaven's sakes. Let's just point somewhere else and head out. So, um, if I leave my ship in space, because I'm probably going to have to do that at some point, right? Uh, am I still going to get interdictions when I leave the game and the uh, ship is just drifting? Because I need to sleep occasionally. And there's not going to be any stations. New destination plotted, let's get out of here.
Ah, this is an unknown system, so we get to explore. found that way. G-type star? Seems to be something around it, is there? There's a little spot there. Okay, well there seems to be something orbiting it over there. Let's try and see what that is. Oh, let's uh, grab some fuel while we're at it. Be careful, though. Fuel scooping. Oh, heat levels are going up. That's not good. Pretty sure that's not good. Hmm. That wasn't very good. I thought I had a good fuel scoop this time. Fuel fuel scoop well, anyway, let's see what this thing out here is. I don't even know if that's a thing or it just happens to be a star that's stuck on that line. Seems like it must be a thing. I mean, uh, the star we just discovered says it's A, so there must be a B somewhere, right? Well, this is looking promising, if distant. I don't know, a little spot doesn't seem to be getting any brighter. Am I doing this right? Is this really a thing, or... Or is this completely wrong? Let me deflect a bit and look at the system view. Well, there's two stars. Sure as heck aren't that close to each other. I'm getting pretty far out here. No, I don't think that's really a star on that line. I think I'm being fooled. In any case, I don't have time for this. I wonder what that line is if there's not a star on it though. Let's see how far away we've gotten from star A. You know, it looks, it looks a lot like the blob I'm chasing from this distance. Just looking along the line to see anything else that could be a candidate. Nope, but I'm not going to waste my time on this one. Let me continue on to other things. Okay, well, uh, Ross... 715 sounds good. Oh, let's even go for... Oh, let's go for Ross 715 first. And then we'll head on to HR 7034. Seems like an awful hot system suddenly. Is there... Do we have, like, really bad power situation here that uh, I keep having heat levels critical? I don't get this. I would have thought that the better... No, 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 no. The better frameshift drive would have given me a little bit better situation, but maybe it's because I'm using like 92% of my output, then that's what's causing the problem. Okay, you look like a red star. You look like uh, M-Class. What are you? Well, nothing around here. Yep, you are a red dwarf. Of course, uh, a red supergiant would be interesting. 
There's another one of those orbits. Oh, that's definitely something, isn't it? Now, red red dwarf should be easy to scoop from, right? I mean, at least that's why I started off doing fuel scooping with. Fuel scooping. Okay, I think I'm close enough to full on that. Let's see about this little system that we've got going here. Seems like a thing there. Oh, well, there's two stars. Let's just hope the second star is a little bit closer than it was in the previous system. Oh, again we get this little signal passing by. What's up with that? Unidentified signal source. Is that supposed to indicate that the little blur in front of me really is a thing, or is it not a thing? I'm getting quite to the end of my patience here. Oh! My speed is going down. That usually happens when you're coming close to some sort of gravitational influence, so I guess we are coming close to something. Quite a long ways away here. I, I don't know if it's even worthwhile to come out this far to to explore another star in a system like this. Better off just hopping systems. Okay, now we've got a contact. Are you something I can explore or not? Not yet. Yeah, this is way far from the orbit line. Wow, it really was something. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, Star B, little brown dwarf. It took a long time to get to you. And I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be hunting for too many more brown dwarves after this. Alright, on to Ross 715. Heat levels critical, sheesh. You know, uh, I'm not using my cargo rack. Is there a way to I can just power it off? Take it off line? line? Let's see. Doesn't seem to change anything. Huh. Yep, doesn't change anything at all. Okay, one new object. G type star, and something unexplored over there. Okay, let's head over to. Up oh, on the side. Ah, uh, that's a bit close to the sun there. Just deflect away a bit. Up, oh, another unexplored sun. Okay. Well, that's much much more convenient than that brown dwarf was. Okay, red dwarf. Good. All right. So I think that does it for this area. Yeah. No stars hiding out. Oh, there's a lot of stars hiding out. Whoa, what's that one? Unexplored. Wish we could target it from this view. Okay, so there's another star out there. And that one looks interesting. 
I don't see any orbit lines hinting at where it might be. Wait, 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 I saw some sort of orbit line there. I think that's just uh, Ross 75A's orbit. Orbiting the Barry Center with the B star. Now, without any sort of orbit line, I'm still not good enough to try and hunt for these other stars. Okay, let us proceed. I wanted to go to this HR 734, I believe, but let me just double check. Okay, this is a interesting looking star, nice and white and bright and everything. Let's get a pulse out. Well, nothing obvious in the neighborhood. Okay, F-type star. System map. And it says A, so there must be a B somewhere. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a lot of stars. And then there's these two here. Oh, there's there's a thing there. Okay, well let's head for that. Yep, it's a little bit... Well, there is a gap between it and the line now. And my speed is not going down, so I don't think I'm aiming at the right thing at all. Let me take a look at this line and see what else there might be. It's a dot there, but I don't think it's anything significant. Okay, I'm gonna give up on this one. Next. Next place. We don't have anything plotted right. F-type star. This is... Also an F-type star. In fact, pretty much identical. If I plot to it... No, we go a different way. Now let's go to this one first. Alright. Oh, that still takes two trips. Alright, well anyway. Okay, you are unknown to us, so please reveal your secrets. Eighteen! Okay, finally we've got a decent system to work with here. Or at least a bunch of rocks. Okay, K-type star. I haven't seen too many of those. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do some belt cluster discovery. This does not look like a belt cluster. Let's see what this is. Okay, looks like it's a planet. Lots of little orbit lines now. Gonna have to see about those. But let's take a look at this planet. Okay, pretty typical looking rocky planet. Bright. Okay. Up oh, another planet. From a distance, it looks a lot like the first one. Yeah, it looks exactly like the first one. Okay, next. Well, whatever this is is interesting, because it's got a sub-thing on it. So it's got some sort of moon, I guess. 
Let's see what that's all about. So, there's a plant with a pretty tight and large moon on it. I haven't seen too many of these. Planet looks a little bit... Is it perfectly spherical? It doesn't look like it. it looks a little bit lumpy. Just a little bit lumpy. Now this thing looks hot. Looks very hot. I wonder what that's made out of. But no detailed surface scanner to figure that out for us. Okay, I, I don't know what the detailed surface scanner actually does, mind you, but I would hope it would give some information about that. This is another planet with a companion moon. Now take a good look at these two. Planet looks sort of Mars-like, maybe? Yeah, sort of Mars-like. Moon, very bright. High albedo sort of thing. Trying to see if it has craters or not. Seems to be pockmarked. Yeah, it's marked up a bit, but not much. Yeah, sort of a bright variant of our own moon. So this seems to be a pretty filled up and tight-knit system. I mean, taking a look at it, uh, the furthest planet out is only f about 415 light seconds. And how many planets are we talking about here? Oh, and we haven't even looked at all the other stars. It's just this one I've been working on. And you see all these planets here. Oh, that one's unexplored. We should take a look at that. Yeah, we're heading for this one, I think. Or one of these two. Got an atmosphere around it. Huh. But all of them are basically, like, within the orbit of Earth to the Sun. Makes sense. This star is smaller than the Sun, but still. Ooh, this thing is very blue. This planet... Is it an ocean planet? Or is it more like Uranus? Uh, there seems to be little islands on it. Unless those are something else. Maybe a really big ocean planet. What's what's its size? Uh it says well it's about Earth size. Not a gas giant in other words. Okay, so this this had a vague inkling of being an Earth-like planet. Let's take a quick look. One thing I want to check out is what happens when I log off for an extended period of time. Is my poor little ship going to get hurt? I haven't seen a station since I've left Kakandi, so I need to find that out. So probably I'm going to park it around this planet, take a break, and see what happens. See if everything is all nice and kosher when I return. This does look like an Earth-like planet. Someone should build a station around here. Yeah, that looks a lot like... A habitable world, green even. There's green vegetation of some sort, I suppose. Oh, 
Okay, let's park it here. Yep, okay, so we are just sort of hovering above this planet. And I'm going to leave it here and see if my ship is safe after I jump out and then return. Taking a bit of a break in the meantime. Alright, so I'll see you when I get back.